Homer Price, Chapter 5, Nothing New Under the Sun. After the county fair, life in Centerburg eases itself back to normal. Homer and the rest of the children concentrate on arithmetic and basketball, and the grown-ups tend to business and running the town in a peaceful, democratic way. Election time still being a month away, the Democrats and the Republicans are still speaking to each other. The ladies' aid hasn't anything to crusade about at the moment, and Uncle Ulysses hasn't bought any newfangled equipment for his lunchroom recently. There is nothing for people to gossip about, or speculate on, or argue about. There's always the weather, the latest books and movies, the ladies' hats. But of course, that doesn't provide nearly enough to talk and think about for a whole month until election time. Uncle Ulysses, the sheriff, and the men around the barbershop usually run out of things to talk about toward the middle of the month. Sometimes during the mornings, the conversation is lively. Like today, the sheriff came in beaming and said, well, I put on long woolen underwear, I mean woolen underwear this morning. So, said Uncle Ulysses, guess I'll have to ask Aggie to get mine out of mothballs this week. Huh, said the barber. I wouldn't wear woolen underwear for anything on earth. It itches. Well, that was something to argue about for almost an hour. Then the subject changed to woolen socks, then to shoes, to overshoes, to mud, to mud in the roads, mud in the barnyards and the barns and the chicken coops. Then there was a long pause. Only 10.30 by the town hall clock, and conversation had already dwindled to nothing at all. Nothing to do but look out the barbershop window, I guess. There goes Doc Pelly, said the barber. I wonder who's sick now. The judge's wife, having a fainting spell maybe, suggested the sheriff. Colby's wife is expecting a baby, said Uncle Ulysses. I'll ask Aggie this noon. She'll know all about it. Well, there's Dulcy Dooner, said the sheriff. Well, he hasn't worked for three years, added the barber disapprovingly. A few children came into view. School's out for lunch, pronounced the sheriff. The door opened and Homer came in saying, Hello, everybody. Hello, Uncle Ulysses. Aunt Aggie sent me over to tell you to stir yourself over to the lunchroom and help serve blue plate specials. Uncle Ulysses sighed and prepared to leave. The sheriff cupped a hand behind his ear and said, What's that? Uncle Ulysses stopped sighing and everybody listened. The noise, it, it was sort of a rattle, grew louder. And then suddenly an old car swung into the town square. The sheriff, the barber, Uncle Ulysses and Homer watched it with gaping mouths as it rattled along the town square once, twice, and on the third time around, slowed down and shivered to a stop right out front of Uncle Ulysses' lunchroom. It wasn't because this car was old, old enough to be an antique, or because some strange business was built onto it, or that the strange business was covered with a large canvas. No, that wasn't what made Homer and the sheriff and Uncle Ulysses and the barber stare so long. It was the car's driver. Gosh, look at that beard, said Homer. And what a head of hair, said the barber. Well, that's a $2 cutting job if I ever saw one. Could you see his face, asked the sheriff. Nope, answered Uncle Ulysses, still staring across the square. Well, they watched the stranger untangle his beard from the steering wheel and go into the lunchroom. Uncle Ulysses promptly dashed for the door, saying, See you later. Wait for me, the sheriff called. I think I'm sort of hungry. Homer followed too, and the barber shouted, Don't forget to come back and tell me the news. Okay, and if I bring you a new customer, do I get a commission, said the sheriff. The stranger was sitting at the far end of the lunch counter, looking very shy and embarrassed. Homer's Aunt Aggie had already served him a blue plate special and was eyeing him up and down with suspicion. To be polite, Homer and Uncle Ulysses pretended to be busy behind the counter, and the sheriff pretended to study the menu, though he knew every single word of it by heart. They just glanced in the stranger's direction once in a while. Finally, Uncle Ulysses' curiosity got the best of him, and he sauntered on down to the stranger and asked, Are you enjoying your lunch? 
Is everything all right? The stranger appeared to be very embarrassed, and you could usually tell he was blushing underneath his beard and all his hair. Yes, sir, it's a very good lunch, he replied with a nod. When he nodded, a stray wisp of beard accidentally got into the gravy, and this made him more embarrassed than ever. Well, Uncle Ulysses waited for the stranger to start a conversation, but he didn't. So Uncle Ulysses said, Nice day today? The stranger said, Yes, nice day, and dropped his fork. Now the stranger was really embarrassed. He looked as though he would like to sink right through the floor. Uncle Ulysses quickly handed the man another fork and eased himself away, so as not to embarrass him into breaking a plate or falling off his stool. After he finished his lunch, the stranger reached into the pocket of his ragged patched coat and drew out a leathery money bag. He paid for his lunch, nodded goodbye, and crept out of the door and down the street with everybody staring after him. Aunt Aggie broke the silence by bouncing on the marble counter the coin she had just received. It's good money, she pronounced, but it looks as though it has been buried for years. Shyest man I ever laid eyes on, said Uncle Ulysses. Yes, said the sheriff. My, as a shouse, I mean shy as a mouse. Gosh, what a beard that was, said Homer. Huh, said Uncle Aggie. Homer, it's time you started back to school, isn't it? By mid-afternoon, every man, woman, and child in Centerburg had something to gossip about speculate on or argue about. Who was this stranger? Where did he come from? Where was he going? How long was his beard and his hair? What was his name? Did he have a business? Well, what could be on the back of his car that so carefully covered it with the large canvas? Nobody knew. Nobody knew anything about the stranger, except that he parked his car in the town parking space and was a spending considerable time walking about town. People reported that he paused in his walking and whistled a few bars of some strange tune they hadn't heard, a tune that nobody had ever heard. The stranger was shy when grumps were near and he would cross the street or go around a block to avoid speaking to anyone. However, he did not avoid the children. He smiled at them and seemed delighted to have them follow him around. People from all over town telephoned the sheriff at the barbershop asking about the stranger and making reports as to what was going on. The sheriff was becoming a bit uneasy about the whole thing. Why, he couldn't get near enough to the stranger to ask him his intentions, and if he did ask, the stranger would be too shy to give him an answer. As Homer passed by the barbershop on his way home from school, the sheriff called him in. Homer, he said, I'm going to need your help with this investigation. This stranger with the beard has got me worried. You see, Homer, I can't find out who he is or what he is doing here in our town. He's probably a nice enough fellow, just an individualist. But then again, he might be a fugitive in disguise or something. Homer nodded. And the sheriff continued, Now, what I want you to do is gain his confidence. He doesn't seem to be afraid of the children, and you might be able to find out more about what this is all about. Oh, well, I'll treat you to a double raspberry sundae if you can get me some information. It's a deal, Sheriff, said Homer. I'll start right now. At six o'clock, Homer reported back to the Sheriff. The stranger seems like a nice person, Sheriff, Homer began. Well, I walked down Market Street with him. He wouldn't tell me who he is or what he's doing, but he did say he'd been away from people for a great many years. He asked me to recommend a place for him to stay, and I said, try out the Strand Hotel. So that's where he went just now when I left him. I'll have to run home to dinner now, Sheriff, said Homer, but I'll find out some more tomorrow. Don't forget about that raspberry Sunday," said Homer. Well, I won't, replied the Sheriff. And Homer, don't you forget to keep me posted on this fellow. Well, after Homer had gone, the sheriff returned to the barber and said, Gall darn it. We don't know one blessed thing about this fellow except that he's shy and he's been away from people for quite a spell. For all we know, he might be a fugitive or a lunatic or maybe one of those amnesia cases where you can't remember anything. If he didn't have so much hair, I could tell you in a second what kind of fellow he is, complained the sheriff. Yup. 
Just one look at a person's ears, and I can tell. Well, said the barber, I judge people by their hair, and I've been thinking. This fellow looks like somebody I've heard about or read about somewhere. Like somebody out of a book, you understand, Sheriff? Well, yes, in a way, but I could tell you definite with a good look at his ears, said the sheriff. Well, here comes Ulysses. Let's ask him what he thinks. Uncle Ulysses considered a second and said, well, I judge a person by his waistline and his appetite. Now, I'm not saying I'm right, Sheriff, because I couldn't tell about his waistline under that old coat. But judging from his appetite, I'd say he's the sort of person that I've read about somewhere. I can't just put my finger on it. Seems as though it must have been in a book. Mmm, said the sheriff. Well, just then, Tony, the shoe repair man, came in for a haircut. After he was settled in the barber chair, the sheriff asked him what he thought about the mysterious stranger. Well, sheriff, said Tony, I judge everybody by their feet and their shoes. Well, nobody's worn a pair of gaiters like this that I saw on him for 25 years. It seems as though those shoes must have just up and walked right out of the pages of some old dusty book. There, said the sheriff, now we're getting somewhere. He rushed to the phone and he called Mr. Hirsch of the Hirsch clothing store and asked, say, Sam, what do you think about this stranger? Yes, the one with the weird. I mean, the one with the beard. Uh-huh, storybook clothes, eh? Thanks a lot, Sam. Good night. Then he called the garage and said, Hello, Luke. This is the sheriff talking. What do you make of this new stranger in town? Yes? Literature? Eh? Dern if I didn't see how you can judge a man by the car he drives, but I'll take your word for it. Good night, Luke. Thanks a lot. The sheriff looked very pleased with himself. He paced up and down and muttered, Getting somewhere. Getting somewhere at last. Then he surprised everybody by announcing that he was going over to the library. In a few minutes, he was back, his mustache twitching with excitement. I've solved it, the sheriff shouted. The librarian knew right off just what book to look in. It's Rip Van Winkle. It's Rip Van Winkle that this fellow's like. Well, he must have driven up into the hills some 30 years ago, fell asleep, got amnesia or something. Yeah, that's it agreed the barber along with Uncle Ulysses and the shoemaker. Then Uncle Ulysses asked, but how about that whatever it is that was underneath the canvas on the back of his car? Now look here, Ulysses, shouted the sheriff. You're just trying to complicate my deductions. Come on, let's just go play checkers. Well, bright and early the next morning, the Rip Van winkle stranger was up and wandering around Centerburg again. By 10 o'clock, Everyone was referring to him as the old Rip and remarking how clever the sheriff was at deducing these things. Well, the sheriff tried to see what was under the canvas, but he couldn't make head or tail of what it was. Uncle Ulysses peeked at it too and said, goodness only knows, but never mind, sheriff. If anybody can find out what this thing is, Homer will do the finding. The same afternoon after school was dismissed, Uncle Ulysses and the sheriff saw Homer strolling down the street with old Rip. Looks like he's explaining something to Homer, said the sheriff. Homer will find out, said Uncle Ulysses proudly. Then they watched through the barber shop window, while the stranger took Homer across the square to the parking lot and showed him his car. Well, he lifted one corner of the canvas and pointed underneath, while Homer looked and nodded his head. They shook hands, and the stranger went to his hotel, and Homer headed off for the barber shop. Did he talk, asked the sheriff the minute Homer opened the door. What's his name, asked Uncle Ulysses. What is he doing, asked the barber. Well, yes, he told me everything, said Homer. It sounds just like a story out of a book. Yes, son, did he get amnesia up in the hills, asked the sheriff. Well, no, not exactly, sheriff, but he did live in the hills for the past 30 years. Well, what's he doing here now, the barber demanded. I better start at the beginning, said Homer. Well, that's a good idea, son, said the sheriff. I'll take a few notes just for future references. <laughs>